Thanks very much. So let's um, ask the question, who wrote the book? I'm glad you had that summary. Who wrote the book of Micah? Micah wrote his own book. What gives you the impression that Micah wrote it? Because it is prophecy. The word of the Lord came to him. So we assume he wrote it, even though someone else, his assistant, may have documented the prophecy. As in Baruch and Jeremiah. Yeah? Or one of the letters, letters of Paul, I think, um, the Roman, the letter to Rome, was not physically handwritten by Paul. Okay? And we can also um, ask the question, when the book was written, what dates the book for you? It's the time of King Hezekiah. Okay, it gives us the kings who are ruling at the time. Were they good kings or bad kings? One was, one was good. Bad. One was bad. One was good. Who, who is bad? He's good. Ahaz was bad. Sorry? Ahaz. Ahaz was bad. Ahaz was good. Ahaz? Okay. It's bad for a while. Yeah. Towards his end. Jotham was kind of good. Jotham was okay. Hezekiah was good. Hezekiah was good. Yeah. So then. Does not tell you that even during the time of the good kings, sin was still reigning, yeah. even though the king was good. For example, Ezekiah. Okay, so just something to bear in mind that to make many times we equate the the bad times with the bad kings, but sometimes when a generation of sin as preceded for so long, even when a good king comes, it is still bad. For example, you will understand it when I take this to an African country, that corruption is so rife in that particular country. Even when a good person comes and takes over, there will still be a lot of corruption. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Okay. So we can date the book. Starflies will give us an exact date in a minute. We can date the book by the kings that were ruling at the time. So that's a good way to date the book. Um, what else helps you to date that particular book? There's something else in that book that should help you to date it. I don't know if it's what you're reading to, but he was a, a contemporary of Isaiah. Yeah, it was a contemporary of Isaiah and And Hosea. Also, what what should help you to date that book? There's something else that should help you to date the book. There was already a division between them. Okay, a little bit closer, a little bit later. This is a what type of book? A pre or post? Pre-exilic. Meaning they have not gone to exile yet. Yeah? Some of us have to date the book was that Assyria was still ruling. This is before Babylon. Ah, your phone is distracting me heavily today. Sorry, Pastor. I really don't like it. I think you should stop it. You need to stop your phone. Sorry, Pastor. Otherwise, I'll start drinking my tea in prayer. <laughs> All right. Please. Sorry, Pastor. Don't keep busy. And don't keep busy. So I'm having cereal. Oh. <laughs> I'll bring my rice and plant it. You definitely won't like that. All right. I have to get you back for that, don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, why was the book written? Quick, quick, so we can get him. As a warning for what? For the sin that was enveloping the nation. 
What nation? Um, the South. Who did Micah speak to? Judah. Hmm? What did you say? Samaria. Samaria. Samaria and Jerusalem. So, so what was that? Israel. Israel. What's Israel? Now there's no twelve tribes now. So the time of the kings, there's no twelve tribes after Solomon. It's the ten and two. Ten, ten and two. Judah and Israel. So who is he speaking to after both of them? He's speaking to both. Okay. What's the capital of Israel? Jerusalem. No. Samaria. Yeah, yeah. What's the capital of Judah? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Oh. In the north, were well, the northern tribe, the ten tribes, the capital of 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 the of Israel, the ten tribes. The ten tribes were Israel. The capital is Samaria. The two tribes are Judah. The capital is Jerusalem. the same in John 4 when you say you Samaritans? Yes. Because the Samaritans were a product of many nations and the poor people that were left when Assyria took Israel away when it was Oshea was king. And over the years they had that different religions and different, remember the book of Kings? That the king of Assyria had to send some priests down because lions was eating them. <coughs> we covered that in the book of Kings. So, so why was the book written? To warn who? The two nations. The two, the two nations. To warn Samaria and Jerusalem about the impending judgment that God is bringing and why he's bringing it. See, even in the Old Testament, I'm beginning to think the Old Testament is not as bad as we have preached it. Yeah. We have preached the Old Testament as though God was ruthless, was ultra ruthless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just slashed it, out. Yeah. <laughs> what we preach is. When you sin, you die. But even in the old, I'm learning from this minor prophet that even in the Old Testament, God didn't do this, you sin, you die thing no. that we preach. So you know what we do? We, we, we point out those those rare instances like the one, you know, like um, the Achan. Yeah, you know, instant death. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, the one, the man that touched the um, oh, the, the arm, yeah, instant. instant. Yeah. yeah. So we think of those instances. Okay. How about um, well, the people get stoned to death for sexual immorality? Sorry. Right? Sorry. Stoned to death for sexual immorality. That's kind of yeah. 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 But hang on a minute. Oh, yes. By the time someone is being stoned to death for sexual immorality because they slept with an animal, oh. they would have been. They would have had a habit yeah. of sleeping around. You don't just go and sleep with an animal one day. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> in, addition, yeah, we in, addition, in addition to that, <laughs> the, the, Can the Canaanites were actually the people that have all this kind of culture. That's very true. And they are actually demonically oriented. They are into demon worship, all these acts. That is why God warned them before they enter into that land. Don't do this, now. don't do that, because once the, once the act is committed, yeah. there's a release. Actually, a actually, beyond that, that's why God told them to eradicate the Canaanites. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Because if they left the Canaanites in on the land, they would uh, influence them yeah. in the way they lived their life. I'm not, I'm not in the way they lived. Okay, they were, quickly, they were, quickly. They were products of the Nephilim and the Raphaims. Which are, which are okay, then somebody says who is that, and then you're taking, you're gonna take us back to Genesis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Sure. Okay. 
So we kind of know why the book was written. Okay, let's go on now. Let me give you an overview of the book. The name Micah means what? You just saw it. Your eyes are so sharp. Who is like God? And he plays around with that name throughout his book. Who, who is like God? Okay? Um, okay, if we have some time, we we'll, we'll kind of do that. Let's go quickly. Yeah. We said he was a contemporary of Hosea and and um, and Isaiah. Ah, okay. Let's say this. Hosea was from the where? Where was Hosea from? North or south? North. And he spoke to Israel. Yeah. And at the same time that he was speaking to Israel, Micah was speaking to Judah. Even though Hosea also spoke a little bit to Judah, he majored on Israel. Micah spoke a little bit to Israel, but majored on Judah. So God was always speaking to his people about their behavior before he took action. And when you look at the period upon which his ministry uh, uh, took, God gave them many, many years to repent. It wasn't, this is not a one year repenting. This is like a 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 100 years nearly of repentance. Okay? Because before, uh, before uh, Judah went to captivity, Israel had gone to captivity a hundred years earlier, at least. So now, okay. Next thing is, uh, there's a song that I believe was framed from this book. What's the song? <coughs> By David, what's the song from Micah? Tell me about my house. Yes, for me. <coughs> as for me. He says that twice in his book, as for me. And we're going to look at that in a moment. As for me. Now, another thing about the, the, the book of Micah is that some prophecies about Israel, but not too much. Okay, I've talked about that. Judah had copied the sin of Israel. Do you notice that? Israel sinned first in Samaria by by what? Worshipping idols. Israel copied Judah copied the same thing. Whenever Israel sinned, Judah copied. And we're gonna ask ourselves a question in a moment about that. So one of the reasons why God was upset with Judah was that Judah even saw Israel go into captivity. And they still did the same thing. It's weird how that happens sometimes. Um, actually, in the book of Micah, Micah was told not to prophesy. Why? How was Micah told not to prophesy? Because his words were too harsh, they said. The Bible says that in the book of Micah that if somebody was prophesying good food and drink, that would be the kind of prophet that people want. What does that remind you of a scripture in the New Testament? Yeah, they had itching ears. They wanted to be told what they liked. Have you noticed that when somebody starts becoming wayward in church, they go to somebody who would not tell them the truth? You start doing stuff that you know you shouldn't be doing. You find a brother or sister who is also cool like you. And you go to them and you say, oh, you know what, I'm kind of like, you know. And the person said, yeah, me too. I'm so, don't go to Sister Victoria. <laughs> Our own Christianity, she's taking it too far. That's a bit extreme. That is all 
That's what they say. <laughs> so don't don't go to the people because they're gonna just you know. Yeah. All right. So you find those verses there. Leaders also have gone astray in chapter three, verse eleven. The leaders of the people have gone astray, which is always the pattern, as we have learned over the months, uh, of what happens when a particular country, by the time a particular country goes down. It's because the leaders themselves have, uh, have gone wayward. So I've always said that for someone in Nigeria to change, all the leaders must be eradicated. You know, there's nothing like natural death. No, they must all be removed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure it can work like that. Waiting for them to die. No, no. From war to presidency. Yes. So from the way they were removed. What happened? Okay. But that's like how Mugabe. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you guys like politics that much. I should go back. Yes. Okay, uh, do you want to write prof prophesy? Or is it prophesy? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Prophesy. Okay. Okay. Prophesy. Our English teacher said it's correct, so must be correct, right? <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> we have two English teachers in NICC. Yeah. yeah. Um. You have to suggest me. Very hard. No. <laughs> um, what, on the last point. Yeah, leaders gonna strike. Leaders gonna strike. Can we see those those kind of patterns today? I mean, as you said, with Nigeria, um, but like obviously, uh, like the Western countries. Same, same here. Even here. Yeah. Yeah. For example, when when okay, let's look at Obama's uh, uh, um, Obama's legislation on abortion. There will be leaders also who supported him yeah. for, it, for, for it to pass through yeah. uh, the various stages of, of the yeah. Senate, House, whatever. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, even in the UK, for, for homosexual marriage to be allowed, yeah. Yeah. it's just a lot of the leaders. Because, I mean, all right, because, all right, I don't know if everyone's noticed, like, of late, the, the, for the past, all right, since um, Jimmy Savile died, you heard about Jimmy yeah, Savile, yeah. yeah. That sex thing. Yeah. That all of these men are being like all of these historical cases that are coming yeah. forth. That's right. And it's a lot of very prominent very people. Prominent, yeah. Now it's gone to the stage where the government are involved. There have been some government yeah. ministers, yeah. Cyril yeah. Smith. So now and then yeah. there was a dossier there were dossiers open mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. they discovered that all of these paperwork that had come to light where yeah. people had been reported, all of them are either missing, destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a lot of prominent government yeah. leaders yeah. who were, you know, in government at the time, even proposing to have a bring out a legislation to enable men to have sex with children mm. in this government. Yes, yes, which is what yeah. I'm trying to push Some of them, through. Yeah, that's which what is, I'm trying to push that through. Yeah, yeah. for the for the yeah. Yeah. for young girls yeah. to be married. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's like yeah. so when I when I think of that, so is it in the same way? There's there some form of because we're not hearing anybody say warning in this country in particular that look if you continue down this road this is the judgment that no, there is there, there, there are many warnings from Christian leaders about the way that Britain is going. There's been many yeah. warnings on that. Yeah. There's been many warnings. There's a particular man that resigned, yeah. There's definitely the past, there, yeah. there, there's definitely been from warnings. Yeah. Then when the flood started, he not told yeah. them that this is the beginning oh, yeah. of the wrath of God. Actually, when I used to go to the Newham uh, Christian and Fellowship prayer like meetings, mm. there used to be warnings about how Britain is going. So, very brief, very brief. <laughs> if you cannot do it, let me move on. You've got to be very brief. Like Pastor said, both this nation and America have been receiving the warning evil for over 40 years before now. The moment this nation in America decided to take God out of the system, there were warnings before, and all their politicians were warned. Yeah. And the moment things start going down, 
that have been won in even 20 years before now. Can I make a, just a quick question? Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. But you mentioned America. You can yeah, you can take it up after. Oh, All right. Oh, oh, oh. The Bible says that they practice the they followed the practice of Omri. Who is Omri? <laughs> Who is Omri? Uh, don't Google it. Don't Google it. Who is Omri? <laughs> Who is Omri? What's the practice of Omri? Who is Omri? What happened when you read that in your Bible? What did you just do? <laughs> what did you say? He said, Pastor will tell us. He didn't Google it. But David, what did you read? When you read about Omri, what did you think? He said, who is that? <laughs> I was the king of, he was a king of Israel. He was a king of Israel. It was Ahab's dad. Oh. Wow. Omri was the father of Ahab. And he did worse than all the other kings. He before. did worse than all the kings before him. When Ahab took over, his son, he did worse than everyone before him as well. Because he married who? Jezebel. Jezebel, the daughter of <laughs> the daughter of who? F. Baal. Okay. Then we know that God gave us in this book a type of the day of the Lord that was going to come because of the sin, because of the sin of Judah. You will notice that. Micah, though he mentioned Assyria, okay, let me, let me ask you this: Who took who took Judah to who took Judah to um? Because go careful about prophecy now. Who took Judah to captivity? Who took Judah to captivity? Babylon. Babylon took Judah to captivity. However, you you read in the book of Micah where Micah says Assyria will take Judah to captivity or Assyria will attack Judah, he says. He didn't say take them to captivity. Why not? Because Assyria came to the gates of Jerusalem but could not enter. But they captured 46 cities that belonged to Judah. Sennacherib was from Assyria. He's the one that came down the time of Isaiah the prophet. Right? Remember that? He had, he had captured 46 cities that belonged to Judah, but he could not go into Jerusalem. So Micah is correct to say that um, Assyria will attack Judah. I say that because when we're given a prophetic word, if you're given a prophetic word, even if you don't understand it fully, just give it as God says it. And if you're listening to prophetic word, always listen to this word. Somebody's given a word, I always listen to the part that is God and the part that is them. And you can always tell, if you listen very carefully, the part that is them and the part that is God. I'm not saying they're trying to confuse anyone or people are trying to, no, no, no. But it's just that they're trying to interpret instead of just saying what God says. They're trying to add to it because they need to, exp they feel the need to explain it a little bit more. Okay? So God may tell you, tell Sister Sandra to stand up, face north, take seven steps. I said, well, Sandra, I just think God told me to tell you to, to stand up. Well, put your shoes on. <laughs> God didn't say that. <laughs> That's your own bit there. So she stands. She's listening well, so she stands up. 
because she knows you're speaking by the Lord. So, but if we're given a prophetic word, even if we don't understand it fully, just give it as God says it. Don't try and add to it. And if you're going to add to it, say, this is not, I'm thinking, maybe this is what it is. Okay, well, you know, just thank God that, you know, we've not really come across too much of an issue there. Assyria will evade Judah and not take them into captivity. Uh, then we hear about the restoration, as Bakuni mentioned earlier on in chapter 7, verses 14 to 20. So, some popular verses. Give me a popular verse in Micah. Chapter 4. Says what? Says, um, I think it's the same thing in. Yes. Something like Isaiah 2, where it says the mountain of the Lord will be established. Yeah. 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 And also, we have the fulfillment of it, or a picture of it in the book of Zechariah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Any, anyone else? Another popular? There's a much more popular one. That's popular. <laughs> 3 verse 8 says, yeah, truly, as for me, I am filled with power by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, that's another popular one. There's one much more popular than that. Mm. Two, seven. Ch um, chapter 7. 2 7. Let me take 2 7 first. Says what? Okay. Okay, that's not as popular as I thought, but go ahead. Um, seven, eight, do not gloat over me, my enemies. Do not gloat over my enemies, even though I have fallen. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's in chapter five. The most popular verse from the book of Micah, I think, is in chapter five, verse two. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, why? Okay. Somebody said, I didn't even know that scripture came from there. It came from Micah. It's quoted in Matthew. So I think I kind of got that. Somebody read chapter, okay, no, you've said it. Chapter 5, verse 2. Chapter 6, verse 8. What's that? Chapter 6, verse 8. Yeah, show the what is good and what does the That's right. Mm -hmm. so just yeah. And when our Lord picked up that scripture in the book of Matthew, mm -hmm. in t interpreted it as, um, I do not desire sacrifice, but he wanted the, the Pharisees to show mercy. All right. Now let's look at one, one lesson, I think, probably we, if we can do two. One of the lessons from the book of Micah. Lessons from Micah. Somebody read please chapter 1 verses 5 to 8 and we will discuss this lesson. All of this for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore, I will make Samaria a heap of ruins in the field, places for the planting and for planting a vineyard. I will pour down her stones into the valley, and I will uncover her foundations. All her carved images shall be beaten to pieces, and all her pay as a harlot shall be burned with the fire. All her idols, is that right? Yeah. All her idols I will lay <clears throat> desolate, for she gathered it from the pay of a harlot, yeah. and they shall return to the pay of a harlot. Okay. So, in that passage, the worship of idols was the key reason why God is upset with Samaria and why God is upset with Judah. The worship of idols. So, tell me. Uh, in the Old Testament, what does the worship of idol mean and what does it entail? Briefly. Yes, um, the worship of idols simply means worship of other gods. 
worship of other gods. But okay. Also involve every worship of idol also involve um, aspects of sexual immorality. Okay. It always go hand in hand. Very true. So if you look at the golden calf, the people got up and indulged in pagan revelry. So which means that uh, there was sex involved in the idol worship. Much of the idol worship had, you had temple prostitutes, both male and female prostitutes were there. So if you were a woman, when you gave your uh, oil and stuff, you also had some sex with it. And if you were a man, when you gave your, you had as many as you wanted. <laughs> so now, so now, what else? What else were involved in, in idol worship? What else? Someone else, please. What else? Sorry? Sorry? Human sacrifices. Human sacrifices. Thank you. Human sacrifices were involved. So a god of, what's that god that was sacrificed to? Molech. and Sephavayim. I don't remember Kimosh being sacrificed to, but it's, it's possible. Definitely Molech and Sephavayim were sacrificed to. So pagan idol worship also entailed the sacrifice of mostly children. Maybe because they couldn't run away. That's also they're seen as pure, aren't they? Yeah. So that's a pure ritual. Because that's pure. A one year age. old. So baby. Yeah, one year old lamb. So <clears throat> and that still goes on today. Yeah. 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 In, in in some cultures. Alright, so now what else? What else? Oppression of the poor. They oppress the poor. They oppress the poor. That's a result of that mindset as opposed to actual part of that worship when they went to the temple to worship. They want to talk about the Asha poles. Yeah. What about it? I know they use the Asha poles, but what does that involve? They built it. Yeah? Yeah? They use it as Okay, I okay let me help you out with that because when they built the images of a particular god, they either removed God's uh, own ceremonial items from its place, or they pushed that aside and that god now became the leading thing in the temple. Moses' tabernacle. Alright? So now, okay, let's ask the question here. Can New Testament believer worship idols? As in, I'm asking this question here. I, I think, no, 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 hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm asking a question. I know the difference between could and can. So Sandra, do I, do, do I look like I know? Do I look like I know? You know. C A N and C O U L D. Please don't look interpret. Don't interpret what I'm saying. I'm asking your question. You couldn't read a permissive way. 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 No, could. If I want to ask a, if I want to ask a could question, I'll ask a could question, right? Sister Esther has to be putting her hand up very gently. Thank you. They do it unknowingly. Okay. Okay. They can and they do, but unknowingly. Right. Who else wants to answer that can? The can question. <laughs> Is it the can question or the could question? Okay. I think they can because when you just mentioned before, when we when you're talking about worshiping of idols, it means pushing God aside mm. in order to give your attention to something else. And I think believers do do that. I mean, that could be in all kinds of aspects. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything that you're giving more attention to mm -hmm. is, is, is an idol yeah. in, 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 the, in the face of God. So, all right, so, yeah, your okay. Children, children. Quick, quick question. I think that the, the, the thing is, with in the Bible, when it speaks of um, people who worship idols, they 
it's bit it's a bit specific mm -hmm. in the sense that it, it, you know there's certain things that they're doing that is clearly it's clear they're not it's not like you know they are it's not they're putting their husbands above them or doing a lot more for the you know things that they're clearly worshiping other for example like people in Asia mm -hmm. and stuff you know they they have Buddhas mm -hmm. and magic gods and stuff you know that's clearly obvious you are yeah. worshiping it. but I think with um, New Testament believers, it's not, it's not, they, they don't, it's, it's not so clear because it's, it, people want to know that it's not that you're putting your children above God and you're putting your... Okay, so well, well that's, what, that's what I'm going to answer that question today. Very brief. Praise God. Mm -hmm. In present day um, New Testament believers. I don't like the way you stand up. Really. <laughs> 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 this, this used to be a double Go ahead, go ahead. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. You got it, okay. Even in the church. Uh huh. Because the Bible clearly says, there shall be no other God. Mm -hmm. Before me, yeah, anything whatsoever that comes takes its place of God has become a God. That is one. Two, the Israelites were one that should make no image, yeah, after the things in heaven, things on earth, yeah, things below the heaven. Okay. So when you walk into a church and they have a statue of Christ mm -hmm. laid on the cross and they bow down, what do we call that? What can we call that? Okay, we we could say we could say it's a it's a image, but actually I want to go beyond that today. But let me ask you a question: What is idolatry or the worship of idols in the New Testament? What exactly is it? Just in case you don't understand that, let me ask you like this then. What scriptures teach on idol worship in the New Testament and where is it mentioned in the New Testament? Is that question clear enough? Yeah. Yeah. Well, for those who think I don't ask this very question. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. <laughs> Just like I knew that you guys were going to try and attack me tonight. I was ready. Yeah, there was, there's this place in the uh, New Testament. Mm -hmm. That was this part of Peter. So he, he there's someone there. There's someone there. Yes, go. Come in. Yeah, yeah. Quick. Yeah, go ahead. So that there were some altars, some idols, and um, there was this oh, because they really in the New Testament of oh, the children of Israel generally they, they love to worship anything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so. And then there was this altar and uh, they wrote uh, to the unknown God, you know. So, and uh, Peter, was it Peter? Paul, oh, Paul. Oh. Uh -huh, Paul, yeah, we'll say, yeah, this one. What, what you want to talk about? Yeah, he was explaining and all that. So, uh, in terms of idol worshipping, mm -hmm. through the ministration of the Holy Spirit, we have to know that even although in, uh, in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. we were using uh, figures, you know, physical things. Okay. But in the New Testament, it has to do with your mind, your spirit, you know. Okay. You dedicate your time to. Okay. There's actually a little bit more than that. Anybody, anyone else? There's someone. Mm -hmm. um, Revelation. Read it, please. Um, Just a verse. Okay. Uh, from someone called Peter's Take to the Church of Ephesus that they left their first love. Could be one or um, in uh, uh, Pergamon. Okay. All right. So the okay. Uh, okay. It's not. It's not specific as I want it. What about First Corinthians eight? Yeah, um, so mm -hmm. says, but not everyone knows this. Some people are still accustomed to idols. Mm -hmm. That when they eat, what yeah, he was talking about fish. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> All right. That was me. That's yeah, that was so the first. Which means New Testament people are still doing it. It was still uh, recognized in the form of recognition of idols. Even till today. But it was more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, All right. 
But in that, that was not. That was. That's not the context of yeah, what the is movie. just there. It was. It was. It was part of yeah. The no. Because of the whole. No. It's, his it's not. He wasn't thinking it about wasn't. about idol worship. No. So let me show you idol worship in the New Testament specifically. Okay. So that when you leave this space today, you are accustomed to, and you understand truly what idol worship is as defined by the New Testament. I'm not saying that somebody thinks you said it was wrong, but there are more definite scriptures that talk about that. Definite scriptures. Yeah? Can could, not can. Could. <laughs> Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter six. I'm gonna read two scriptures. This is one of them. Second Corinthians six, and I'm gonna read it for you. Do not verse 14. Do not yoke, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What's Belial? It's a God. What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and what? Idols. Idols. Okay, I'm going to explain in a moment. For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. When somebody is unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, you are messing with idols. As far as God is concerned, when an unbeliever and a believer get together in like marriage, Okay, not you're working, you're in a car. Yeah. <laughs> All right? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. No. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, gonna to give you one more. Otherwise, when, when, when Paul was going to Rome and he got on a ship that belonged to the twin gods, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, one of them was Solak, I think, or Pollock, yeah, he still got on the boat. Yeah. All right? So, no. But when you are involved with intimately. intimately, most probably, most probably, like a marriage relationship with an with an unbeliever, as far as God sees it, you are tangling with idols because the unbeliever is seen as worshiping another god. Yeah. Okay. So what you are doing is you are jointly worshiping that other god. Yes. But what if you have intentions of like converting to your Okay. Right. What the Bible teaches us is we never we never find a place where scripture teaches get in a relationship with them and as that can be the means of their salvation. No. Bible doesn't teach that. Bible teaches is let them give their life to Jesus. Become born again. Then marry them. Yes. And what about that prophet that married the prophet? I don't care. Yeah. Oh, this is a I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me let me answer that another way. Actually, let me answer that another way. God died. Go ahead. Go ahead. He did it with fully. Go ahead. Yeah. Basically, <coughs> I'm not what I'm talking about is, yeah, is if a believer mm -hmm. marries an unbeliever, mm -hmm. because our bodies are the temple, yeah, to now marry an unbeliever is to defile the temple yeah, of God. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, and, and, and as idolatry practice defile the temple of God, as we said, they remove the utensils of God and put in a new type of utensils. 
like one of the kings did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Praise God. And why do you, if you are, let's say, you're married, you work on believers, there's one of you who's become the most popular, and you are the most popular. Yes. Because. Aren't you competitively, he or she, dividing you? No. No. Because you are already married. Yes. As unbelievers, yeah. Bible teaches that in Second First Corinthians chapter seven. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I don't, yeah, I wanted you to tell me the scripture. Um, First, Corinthians, First Corinthians seven. Uh, because I remember uh, reading it or listening to it audio that basically stay in your circumstance. So if you're two unbelievers and one of you is saved. Um, that does not now permit you to divorce them no. yeah. and marry a believer. Yeah. You need to stay in that circumstance yeah. mm-hmm. and pray for them, basically. Mm-hmm. Actually, your holiness mm-hmm. sanctifies the wife or the husband who is not saved. Yeah. 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 And it looks, what the Bible says. Yeah, yeah. It, looks, it looks to me, it looks to me as though they're saved. But that's another question, and I'm not sure I want to deal with that. Right now. But yeah, but so, so are you, are you, are you sure? Are you clear on that? Okay. When two people are not believers, and we cannot say, okay, I don't believe in Jesus now. <laughs> okay, now I believe in Jesus. <laughs> Quickly. Um, also, except um, in a situation where the unbeliever walks away, I think it frees you in that yeah. case. Yeah. First Corinthians 7 talks about yeah. if, yeah. yeah. if the person yeah. walks away. Yeah. Now, that's, we have to now think, what does that walk mean, away. walk away? Mm-hmm. If the person says, okay, I, I don't like the fact that you're going to church, so I told not to go to church, you say you're going to go to church, so I'm, I'm walking away, meaning I'm going down the road, but I'm not going to get married. If, if they don't get married, you are still not allowed to leave that marriage. But anyway, let's go. Second one is Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Somebody read verses 4 to 6. Colossians 3, 4 to 6. Please read. Let's go. When Christ, who is your life, appears, mm-hmm. then you will also appear with him in glory. Put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, <coughs> lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Which is what? Idolatry. What is idolatry now? Sexual morality. Sexual immorality. Okay. What else? Impurity. Impurity. Greed. Greed. You know what shocked me? Greed. Yeah. Yeah. It's idolatry. Yeah. Wow. And then in Matthew 6, um, 624 again Jesus said you can't serve both God and, and money and, and it shocked me to realize that greed is idolatry it's from the devil. we know that sexual immorality is I did, did I really know that sexual immorality is idolatry okay yes yeah, so we we'll put some scriptures together first Corinthians 6 and, and stuff whoever whoever uh, uh, is united with the posture is one without in spirit you know that, but greed is lost is lost is idolatry. All those things put self yeah. before God. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. this is whatever belongs to your flesh. And all those things they put self before yeah. God. Yeah. Read, read for me the Amplified in that version. That's on. Uh, With the amplified in it. Amplified. Amplified says verse five. Oh, verse five. Mm-hmm. Um, so kill. Kill, deaden, deprive of power. Yeah, kill, deaden, deprive of power. The evil desires lurking in your members. Right. Those animal impulses and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin, sexual vice, impurity, sensual appetites, 
on holy desires and stop holy stop me one 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 minute sensual sensual appetite okay let, let me tell you one <coughs> that, I, <coughs> that I think is sexual sensual appetite somebody likes watching 18 movies that are geared towards sex you know some 18 movies are very erotic that's the kind of appetite that needs to die not even 18 movies, you know. Sorry, some of the... Some of the um, 15. Some of the, no, even I'm the 12. I'm not even talking about films. Some of the series. Some of the... Um, yeah, free, yeah. No, there's a series that's come out. Um, Shonda Rhimes, whatever that woman. Um, <coughs> How to Get Away with Murder. Mm, okay. I watched an episode of it. It's like, ah, God forbid. <laughs> there's homosexual sex. Mm. Woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma, women, and so ma, you know, women the having sense. the woman, the main woman's having an affair. Yeah, she's still, she's married, and it's like ah, every near enough, every TV ten TV minutes, TV there's TV a sex scene. Oh. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's not even, it's not even films, not even films. Okay, who's got who's got an NLV, NLV translation? <laughs> I'm sure that would have the same kind of level. <laughs> 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 NLV. Yeah. But if you're online, you can watch it any time of day. Colossians 3, NLV. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's the sign up. Please finish reading that. Okay. Sensual appetites, uh -huh. unholy desires, shall not stop pulling down the city. Now, the all greed and covetousness. <laughs> For well, that is idolatry, the deifying of self and other created things instead of God. Right. Yeah. Okay. NLV, please. Same verses. NLT. NLV. 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 There is. There's none. There is none. NLV, New Life Version. Yeah. And the NLT is the translation. I oh, okay. I have it. I have good news. Okay. Should I read the good news? Yes, read it, please. From four. I'm yes, please. <laughs> your, your real life is Christ, and when he appears, then you too will appear with him and share his glory. You must put to death then the deadly desires at work in you, such as sexual immorality, indecency, lust, evil passions, and greed. For greed is a form of idolatry. Right. Greed is a form of... Let, let me read this. Destroy the desire of sin that is in you. These desires are sex sins, anything that is not clean, a desire for sex sins, and wanting, wanting something someone else has. This is worshipping a God. It's interesting, isn't it? How yeah. do you succeed? What what do you okay, if you want to succeed at something, who are you gonna how are you gonna succeed if you don't want what other people have? Okay, All right, okay. Kind of let me let me give an example of wanting something somebody else has. Um is 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 like we talk about keeping up with the Joneses. Okay. So you might say, um, let's look at a material thing. So somebody has a nice car next door to you. And you go outside every morning, you look at that car, and you think, my God, I had to switch, I could, I could, I could, I could have that. Mm -hmm. Then you start thinking, they don't even deserve it. I mean, I deserve it. Mm -hmm. Then you start doing stuff so that takes you away about from what you believe so that you can get it. It becomes your priority. It now becomes your priority. Mm -hmm. You say, well, give to church. No, man. <laughs> it's not become an obsession for you to get that. Now that's to become a greed. That's a greed now. Yeah, it has now, to do with material things, you know, unlike yeah. the things that, that are of the spirit, you know. So that's different. Yeah. What God expects us to do, you know, somebody says, does anybody have passion? I think everybody has passion. Mm -hmm. Alright? We just turn our passion a different way. Everybody has passion. Don't be praying, God, give me passion. No, no, no. You have passion. You have passion. 
You're just not using it for God. That's all it is. So, but if you look at somebody else who has a nice car, you think, oh, my. If they can buy that car, man, I just know that one day I'm going to get mine. Okay, Father, I thank you. I received that car in Jesus, and I believe it. Praise God. And you walk towards it, generally, genuinely, you're not kind of giving everything else away so they can get that car. Then that's a good way to look at it. Too. Okay. And you ask yourself also, do you, is that the way you envy for spiritual things? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the real passion, the real, uh, uh, there's never, there's no scripture that tells us don't thirst after spiritual things in, in an unusual way. No. So let the zeal of your father's house consume you. So you have that, that zeal should be used to chase God, not to be chasing things. So that's the balance. So I agree with you that are you going to progress if you don't look at somebody and say, well, they have a nice job. I mean, come on, I should have a nice job too. Yeah, that's good. And then you start pursuing it by working towards yeah. that stuff. But it doesn't become an obsession. It doesn't become something that takes you away from God. You see, if God is first, then everything else will be in moderation and you will get there. Okay, so am I clear? Yeah. So I'm not saying don't look, but watch how you look. Botox. 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 Quick, um, with with like you know, yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, but the difference, there's a difference because like it's one thing to want. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. What someone else wants, as in, oh yeah, I'd like to also have that, and you, like you said, you work towards it and stuff. But then there's wanting what someone else has, like you said, to the point where okay, you should not have it. I want it. So like people who feel no way to wreck a marriage because yeah. you don't deserve him. Yeah. So it should be mine. Exactly. And, you know, so instead of praying for a good husband like that, yeah. you now That's take right. that one. Yeah. Yeah. No. There, there, there was a woman who... There's a woman who had a... There's a, there's a woman who had a picture of, of herself. She cut Gloria Copeland off. Yes. Had a picture of herself Ken with Kenneth Copeland. And she's praying about it. She's getting her church to pray about it. And the church, the stupid people also, are praying about it. That she would die. Gloria would die. It's speaking death to Gloria. That she would she would then take Kenneth and be married. That's greed. That's that's an idol. That's like, you know. And the man would want to marry you. She's a loony. <laughs> Somewhere the devil has come in there to it's take advantage the of it. the same thing like when you have your, your screen idol, like Brother Dick <laughs> on your yeah. wall. Yeah. Mm. Or David mm. Beckham, he's a married man. Mm. Yeah. But so many women are lusting over this man. Mm. He's yeah. married with mm. children. Mm. Yeah. But women, they're okay. determined. Alright. Take it. So he's been talking, no, so go. No, I was going to say that um, also quick quick true in terms of roles or something that someone you, you're up to a role that you're someone is occupying that somebody wants there'll be people that will do whatever they can to make sure they get that job by whatever means yeah. so yeah. if they have to devise something they have to plant something or whatever to yeah. get that person out of that job so that they can put themselves in that yeah they want to sabotage that person yeah. 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 so it's interesting to know what the new testament calls idolatry um, so let's be careful not to practice it because we, it's easy for us to laugh at the Old Testament saints and say yeah because they went to get some God and they had an image well what about us you know let's, let's kind of look at things a little bit more differently yeah, alright let's just pray we, we, we kind of, we'll pick this up next week and we'll go on from there just to remind us that by now we've done Almost all the all the new Te all the Old Testament. We've only got about four or five books left: Daniel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Songs of Solomon. Oh no! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
from yeah. pastor's <laughs> drum roll. Where did you, 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 for Sandra's sake, we're not going to take the book from this uh, way. Right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you can read it yourself. <coughs> you can read it yourself, but you are not allowed to ask me questions. Let's pass on There's one thing reading it. There's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to know. Trust me. Yes, she does. When she's ready. Okay, let me give you a scripture that summarizes the Song of Solomon. Do not awaken love until it's ready. Alright, so if you're ready. Let me just talk. Alright. So we got we got uh, uh, Daniel. Songs of Solomon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Lamentation. Lamentation. Okay, Ezekiel. Lamentation. Daniel. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Five. That's it. That's all we got left on the New Testament, on the Old Testament. There's five words. <coughs> uh, I was gonna say we finish it by the end of the year. No, we we'll won't. Um, so we're gonna do that. Okay. So let's keep reading. Please read ahead. I think the next book. It's likely to be Daniel. Yeah. So we'll tackle we'll Daniel right and Ezekiel together. Or wow. in subsection in, in wow. succession. Sucks. Succession. Thank you. Succession. Yes. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna look we're gonna look at Daniel first, then we'll look at Ezekiel because they're kind of prophetic books in that way, eschatological mm -hmm. books. So. And Daniel will prepare us for a bigger book yeah. of Ezekiel. How long Ezekiel will take, I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought we're gonna do it brief. Oh, we're going to spend a lot of time on it. Yeah, so I'm going to Okay, so let's give an offering and bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And you guys are just sitting down. It's after eight. <laughs> the one around call. Um, it's after eight, so we need to kind of pray and go. Amen. <laughs> Whilst we're doing that, any questions? Any final questions? Any questions? Any thoughts? Deborah, I thought I'll teach you that book, but. No, I'm not I learned it. Mr. Flores. Did you learn it? Oh, Oh, what's his name? Oh, Sandra, you were there, weren't you? Oh, yes, I was there. 